This F-150, she's a little bit hot right now because she was just out back running a regen. This EcoBoost is just running a little bit of a regen right now. The filters were pretty full, so we're just we're just running a little burn out back here. Got to get the RPMs up to get our exhaust temps nice and high to clean those filters out. A regen, you say, Alex? But there aren't any diesel engines in this F-150 lineup, and you would absolutely be correct. But starting in 2026, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost in this F-150 will be coming with gasoline particulate filters as well as losing 18 horsepower. So you might as well get familiar with the term regen, baby, because it is just the tip of the iceberg. Welcome back, I'm Alex and this is a 2025 3.5 liter EcoBoost. So no, we weren't actually running a regen, nor does this truck actually have particulate filters. But as I've said, this day would come and well, here it is because this is the first of probably many half ton truck engines that will indeed come with gasoline particulate filters, baby. You gotta love it. I know that most of my viewers are pretty darn well educated when it comes to this type of stuff, but if you're not aware of what a gasoline particulate filter is or a GPF, ever heard of a diesel particulate filter or a DPF, which have been on diesel engines since 2007 and causing headaches ever since, well, a gasoline particulate filter is essentially the same thing. A GPF that is going on this 2026 EcoBoost engine like a diesel particulate filter is used to eliminate up to 99% of soot, unburnt hydrocarbons, particulate matter, just the black stuff that comes out of the exhaust. And today we're gonna to talk about how this is going to potentially affect the gasoline engines in North America moving forward. And if it is indeed time to panic or not. Right off the bat, as of right now, it looks like the only gasoline engine in the half ton as well as the HD truck segment to come with gasoline particulate filters in 2026 is indeed this 3.5 liter EcoBoost. Our good friend Tim from Pickup Truck and SUV Talk confirmed that GM, Ram, and Toyota's turbocharged gasoline engines will not be coming with any GPFs in 2026. Why the turbocharged engines? Well, we'll We'll get to that in a second. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, not only is this engine gonna have some extra hardware in the exhaust system, it's also losing 18 horsepower, going from a very clean 400 horse, 500 pound feet of torque in this 2025 engine to only 382 horsepower, 500 pound feet of torque in the 2026 engine. But we're not done there yet because Ford's Power Boost hybrid platform in these trucks also uses this exact same 3.5 EcoBoost, and that engine will also have gasoline particulate filters on it, so the Power Boost is going to be losing 10 horsepower as well. The silver lining, if any, is that the high output 3.5 EcoBoost in the Ford Raptor trucks is apparently not getting any gasoline particulate filters at this point in time, meaning that that engine will remain at 450 horsepower. Why is that, you might ask? Well, it's probably because Ford doesn't really sell that many Raptor trucks. Now, before we all grab our pitchforks and torches and head down to our local Ford dealership and freaking give them a piece of our mind, we have to remember that this is not a Ford thing. They are just following the EPA requirements for 2027. And I can almost guarantee if I had a candid moment with some of Ford CEOs, they would all say that this emission crap, I mean, beautiful emission componentry is not something that they actually wanna put on these engines. And unfortunately, Ford seems to be taking some brunt here, but they are just the first of many manufacturers that will have to add gasoline particulate filters to their gasoline engines by 2027 to meet the new 2027 EPA requirements, which we will touch on in just a second here. How a particulate filter works is the soot and unburnt fuel, which you can sort of see there. there is indeed some black stuff in this tailpipe. It's a pretty new engine, but this black stuff is unburnt fuel, soot, particulate matter. This stuff gets trapped in a rather large filter with a honeycomb-like structure made of curterite, exactly what a diesel particulate filter is made of. And it is highly effective at eliminating particulate matter, like I mentioned, up to 99%. Once a particulate filter becomes full of soot and unburnt carbons, and usually they're located 
right around here, which is why I'm pointing around there, we need to perform what's called a regen. And a regen is when hot exhaust gases go into your particulate filter and help burn off all that unburnt soot, unburnt hydrocarbons, and therefore cleaning the filter. The good news is on a gasoline particulate filter, regens are usually very rare if ever needed. The first reason why GPFs don't need to regen as frequently is pretty obvious because gas engines just don't produce as much soot as diesel engines, anywhere from 10 to 20 times less amount of soot. The second reason is that gasoline engines, specifically turbocharged direct injection engines, have much hotter exhaust temps than a diesel engine. So when we're just at normal driving conditions, the hotter exhaust is going to be naturally burning a lot of that soot right out of the GPFs. And so the filters are just gonna stay a lot cleaner just from normal driving. Thirdly, the particulate matter that gasoline engines makes tend to be smaller, lighter, and more volatile, meaning that we don't need as much temperature to burn them off. So once again, just from normal driving conditions, our filters should stay pretty clean. Whereas a diesel engine produces much heavier particulate matter. And in fact, its DPFs need to get so hot that those engines actually inject raw diesel fuel into the exhaust to get those temps very, very hot. Where gasoline particulate filters don't need that much temperature to perform a passive regen. We do have some exceptions. For example, if you're only driving short trips, not letting the engine get up to temp, maybe you're in colder conditions, or if you're letting these engines idle a lot, that will produce a lot more soot load and the frequency of regens is going to go way up. But for most people who are driving these engines in normal conditions, you probably won't even notice that they're there. Next on the docket, why are turbocharged direct injection gasoline engines so heavily under the microscope? Well, it's because engines like this 3.5 EcoBoost produce a lot more soot and particulate matter than a naturally aspirated port injection engine, something like a 5.7 liter Hemi. And in theory, an engine like this 3.5 EcoBoost can produce up to 50 to 100 times more soot or particulate matter than something like a 5.7 liter Hemi. So that's why these engines are first on the list. It is interesting because yes, these smaller displacement turbocharged engines are more fuel efficient, but when it comes to emissions, oftentimes they are far more polluting, at least when it comes to particulate matter than a big naturally aspirated V8 engine. And there's a number of reasons why, but primarily when these engines are under boost, they're running a much richer fuel mixture and that leads to a lot of unburnt fuel leaving the tailpipe. Also just power density. They are injecting more fuel per stroke. Again, that can lead to more particulate matter leaving the tailpipe. In Europe where gasoline particulate filters have been implemented for almost a decade now, shows exactly this. Naturally aspirated port injection engines are not required to have GPFs on them because their particulate matter emissions naturally falls below the emission threshold, which is kind of cool. I'm not saying the answer to everything is an old school pushrod port injection V8 engine, but when it comes to particulate matter emissions, they run pretty damn clean. And moving forward, they're most likely not going to need gasoline particulate filters. Ford is implementing GPFs on their EcoBoost engine, the first manufacturer to do so in the half ton segment, but probably won't be the last in preparation for the 2027 EPA emission updates, which I believe is the multi-pollutant emission standard for model year 2027 and later light duty and medium duty vehicles. Now I'm more in touch with the diesel side of emissions, not so much the gasoline stuff. So take my word with a grain of salt. But from my understanding, this regulation states that manufacturers need its fleets to meet an average of 0.3 milligrams per kilometer of particulate matter. And this includes cars, SUVs, light duty trucks, and potentially some heavy duty trucks, just depending on their GVWR, allegedly. So basically Ford has to take an average of almost all of the vehicles they sell, and it has to be below 0.3 milligrams per kilometer. So seeing that turbocharged direct injection engines produce a ton of particulate matter, it only makes sense that manufacturers are going to target these engines first. So that's why a low sales volume vehicle like the Ford Raptor probably isn't going to matter that much because it's an average 
of all vehicles sold. And that's probably why Ford didn't put a GPF on that truck. Also, in terms of other manufacturers, we already know that the 3.4 liter iForce engine in the Tundra trucks is offered all over the world and in Europe and other places in the world. That engine already comes with a gasoline particulate filter. So that is a very easy switch for Toyota to make. And I would assume GM, Ram, they are all prepared to roll their engines out with gasoline particulate filters. Ford, for example, has been testing this engine for a couple of years now, allegedly, with gasoline particulate filters because all these manufacturers have known since 2024 that this emission regulation was coming into effect. So it's coming and it's here. Lastly are the direct injection non-turbo engines, something like a five liter Coyote that can come in these F-150s or the new GM V8s that are gonna be dropping coincidentally in 2027. These engines sort of fall in the middle because they don't produce as much particulate matter as 3.5 EcoBoost, but they do produce more particulate matter than a naturally aspirated V8 engine, for example. So it all depends on where these manufacturers sort of fall with their fleet average particulate matter because if they are not within that average engines like a five liter coyote or a new gm v8 engine that are indeed direct injection may fall under the category of having to have gasoline particulate filters but at the end of the day i'm just some stupid youtuber and absolutely nothing is confirmed who knows what's going to happen but again if i was a betting man i think that this 3.5 ecoboost was just the first shoe to drop and by 2027 I think we're gonna see a lot more GPFs in the half ton segment. Let me know what you think. But what I can 100% confirm as a diesel mechanic that worked on emission systems almost daily for about a decade is that this is going to lead to more failure points, which means less reliability, plain and simple. And yes, these GPFs will not have to regen as frequently, which is a good thing, but it does not eliminate all the potential problems related to a particulate filter. The concern in my mind is the additional componentry that comes along with having a gasoline particulate filter, all the sensors, wiring, software. I mean, you'll probably have at least two temp sensors, at least two pressure sensors. You'll probably have a soot sensor, wiring going to each down in the hot exhaust system, probably subject to road grime, salt, corrosion, all the good stuff. And when a sensor goes bad or when a sensor is potentially giving a poor reading, it's going to throw a check engine light, meaning you'll have to go back to the dealership to get their proprietary software to read and diagnose the emission engine code. And a lot of times, emission engine codes are a calculated value, meaning that it's not a sensor has gone bad. It's just the ECU has calculated a false value somewhere along the lines, and it's the job of the technician to determine why that is and that can become very timely in the diesel world chasing dpf and emission related codes can be just a complete pain and these gpfs will have a lifespan so if you're planning to keep the truck for a while odds are you'll probably have to replace a gpf along the way usually not the easiest thing to do as well as pretty expensive and Usually filter life is calculated by the amount of gallons of fuel burnt. And when that threshold is met, even though the filter may still be functioning perfectly fine, it'll throw a check engine light and you'll get that engine light scanned and it'll say that the filter life has come to an end and you'll have to put a new filter in the truck. Well, let's see here. Um, oh, <laughs> nothing, nothing to see here, fellas. Um, <laughs> As much as we probably all want to grab the sawzall and just, you know, lighten up the exhaust system just a little bit. Unfortunately, with these GPFs, you just can't grab your sawzall and cut them off because the engine is programmed to read the sensors, the software associated with the GPUs, and to run in a specific manner because of that. So if you do end up deleting a GPF, um, not only can you kiss that warranty goodbye, but you're gonna to have to end up reprogramming the ECU to have the engine run properly, very much like a modern diesel engine. Well, the old EPA fellas strikes again, and boy oh boy are those HD naturally aspirated port injection gasoline V8 engines just looking better and better every day. Probably some of the last internal combustion engines to come with emission equipment if 
I had to guess. Either way, these GPFs should be less of a hassle than the diesel emission components that we've been dealing with for years now, but nonetheless, could still be a hassle. Well, that's it for me. If you guys did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Come on, don't leave me hanging. And as always, let me know what you guys think. You guys uh, always leave great comments and I love reading what you have to say. Very knowledgeable bunch you guys are. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.